In November of 2017, Drexel enacted a new smoking ban across the majority of its campus. I'm here today to get people's opinions on Drexel's new smoking-free areas. I'm a non-smoker. I dabble. <laughs> uh, no, I've actually never smoked before. In late 2017, Drexel sent out an email titled New Smoke-Free Areas and included this map showing where people are not allowed to smoke. Smoker or non-smoker, this is an issue that affects each member of our Drexel community in different ways. I feel like it's kind of excessive. I feel like you can, if you, if you want to smoke, you can smoke wherever you want as long as it's outside, I feel like. I didn't know about it and now I feel like it's a good thing because smoking is obviously a bad habit and harmful to your body. So I think it's good that they're promoting like um, something against smoking. I knew about them slightly and I don't really care to be honest, but I have a lot of friends who do. Yeah, I didn't know about it until you mentioned it to me, actually. Um, I think they kind of picked a bunch of areas where there's a lot of traffic flow, so I think that's kind of good for people who you know, don't like the secondhand smoke experience, so it makes sense to me. While some students focused on how the ban affects them and their friends, others talked about the reasonings behind the changes. Probably to make the campus like a little more clean and I guess to just to be aware of like, you know, have like the people that do smoke have like, you know, their specific area um, and like have it not affect non-smokers, I guess. Um, I think they did it to encourage um, less smoking. Kind of for that reason, people that don't want to be around, you know, those carcinogens and the smoke in the air, um, just to accommodate those people, I guess. Good or bad, some students question if the ban will really be effective in the long run. I don't really think it has an effect, honestly. I, I feel like people are just gonna do it whether there are rules in place or not. Like, and what could they possibly do that like they're gonna like bring the hammer down. Like, no, they're not gonna do that. So I don't I don't know. I, I see why it's a thing, but I don't know how helpful it is really. We also talked to the experts at Drexel University who were behind creating and implementing this plan. The young people today are leaders in this. It's great that they are because as I said, once you start smoking, once you initiate at a young age, you really are destined to have trouble kicking that habit. That's where most people begin. I can't say it enough. No amount of tobacco is safe. Not chewed, not inhaled, you know, not used as snuff. Um, cigar, cigarello, and vaping are all dangerous to your health. Philadelphia Department of Public Health Tobacco Policy and Control Program Manager Ryan Kaufman says the smoking ban at Drexel is catching students at an early age to keep them healthy for a lifetime. First and foremost, they protect people from secondhand smoke exposure, which as I mentioned has no safe level uh, of exposure, but there's also other benefits which are the less commonly considered. So they help reduce the likelihood of young people initiating tobacco use. They help prepare young people for tobacco-free workplaces. So um, as Drexel graduates sort of enter the working world, a vast majority of uh, working environments are tobacco-free as well. So it's sort of preparing and setting that norm early for those students before they arrive in those professional settings. They also help motivate individuals to quit smoking. Kaufman says smoking bans like the one at Drexel are key to reducing tobacco use, not only for young adults on campus, but for adults throughout the city and beyond. It's so about 90% of all smokers start before the age of 18, but about 99% start by the age of 26. So the college age population is a very critical point in time when experimental tobacco users become daily or frequent tobacco users. Morgan Fields, D News.